Hello everybody, this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series, and today I have a co-host, Mr. Devin Keller. He is going to be joining me today to co-host with me. Um, today has been a little difficult for me. I'm in a high pain levels, so I decided to uh, ask my son to come on with me. He is an aspiring engineer, an aspiring vlogger, and um, an aspiring entrepreneur as well. So I hope that you will join us um, tonight on the Speak Up and Inspire series with my co-host, the very handsome Mr. Derek, De Derek, <laughs> Mr. Devin Keller. You don't look like a Derek. Do you like a Derek? No. <laughs> Um, we will also be interviewing Mr. Delvon Harling as we continue um, the series this month for inspirational teachers. Um, we will be adding him here shortly um, to the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, but tonight, I want to take a moment to get to know our co-host, Mr. Devin. <laughs> He's not shy, I promise you, he's not. So, Mr. Devin, you are joining us tonight um, as my co-host, but I had you on for two particular reasons. One, you are part of the Butterfly Visions BV Kids Mentor Program, and actually, Mr. Delvon is going to be your mentor, which I'm very excited about. Wait, I'm going to be a mentor? No, Mr. Delvon is going to be your mentor. Wait, you just said I was a part of the... You're part of it. You're one of the BVP Kids mentees. Why are you looking so confused? I am confused. <laughs> well, then Mr. Devon, he reached out to you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he is going to be your mentor in the BVP tongue tied BVP Kids Mentor Program. Mm -hmm. Got it? Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, that was one reason why I asked you to co-host with me tonight. But another reason is because you are working on starting your own business, right? Tell us about it. Well, um, yeah, it's going to be a a tutoring business. I'm going to be tutoring fourth and fifth graders for math and science. And um, I have done everything that I needed to, like research and stuff. And I'm going to be starting an Instagram page for it and a, a new email later. Okay. So, why do you think you're qualified to be a tutor? Um, I have really good grades in math and science. And so, I think that, and I want to help the other kids in fourth and fifth grade because I can, I know how hard it is to go from fourth and, from elementary to, um, to middle school and so I just wanted to help them. Okay, sounds good. So is math one of your favorite subjects? Yes. Okay, and what do you like about math? Numbers. Okay, what about numbers? Um, it's about money or? I like, I like, um, compli I complicate things. You like complicating things? Yes, so I you like, like debating and making things seem more complicated than they are. Okay. Okay. With, with numbers, you can flip them, dip them, and move them around, and they will always become a way you want. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So what about science? I know that you've always liked science. What is? What do you want to be when you grow up? Engineer. An engineer. What kind of you, um, engineer do you want to be? I want to work at NASA. As an aerospace engineer. Nice. So that means you're going to be making some big money so you can take care of mommy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, my son, he promised that he was going to do something with his first check. What did you tell me you were going to do when you get your first paycheck? When I get my first paycheck, I'm mm -hmm. going to go to um, L.A. with my mom. We're going to fly there in first class. Nice. I can't wait. I can't wait. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I have all the faith in the world that you are going to be exactly what it is that you want to be. Okay. Right? Okay. All right. So, um, Devin is going to be starting his business. What's the name of your business? Company? It's called 123 Math on Me. Okay. And what's your slogan? 
uh, one, two, three, math on me. Um, uh, I, for, I forgot the rest. Uh, one, two, three, math on me. Um, you learn with me, you pass with me, or something. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's one, two, three, math on me. And you said you're going to help uh, fourth and fifth graders, but what about what about third graders? Because, you know, third graders start to get grades and stuff. What about so, third graders? I I will help third graders, but I'm focusing on fourth and fifth grade. Okay. Because fourth and fifth grade are very similar. Okay. And third grade is, like, still coming out of second grade. And second grade is very kidding. <laughs> Okay, well, hopefully, as you expand your business and start your business, that you'll think about helping third graders, too. Since they're getting grades, um, that might be good for you to think about that, too. too. Yeah, and they have EOGs, too. Exactly. Yeah, so you might want to think about adding third grade to your your clientele. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Maybe? All right. So, we are going to be... Interviewing who? Uh, Mr. Delvon. Mr. Delvon. Awesome. And do you what do you know about Mr. Delvon? That he is a mentor. Mm-hmm. What else does he do? Um, he's a DJ. And what else? Um, he has his own business. Like. Yep. And this month we are talking to inspirational teachers. Mm-hmm. So Mr. Delvon is a teacher and he's been a teacher, I think, over ten years. Yeah, that is a long time. But guess what? He's going to be a great mentor to you because you as a tutor are going to be a what? Teacher. You're going to be a teacher too, right? Awesome. Awesome. So we are going to go ahead and add Mr. Delvon so that he can join our interview tonight. So we are going to add him. Hey, how are you? What's going on, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? Can y'all hear me? Uh-huh. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Well, you see, we have a co-host tonight. Devin the Great. How you doing, my brother? Hi. <laughs> Look, we're going to work so, on your slogan. We're, we're going to work on your slogan for your um for your tutoring business, okay? I, I'm going to ask my ideas. I'm going to share it with you, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Delvon, um, excuse the hair. I need a haircut. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our inspirational te- uh, teacher series this month of August. Um, and I know that you are a teacher in Columbia. Is that correct? Yes, Columbia, South Carolina. All right, nice. So tell us, how long have you been a teacher? Oh, for, um, let me see, I got started, I got started as a sub, actually, in 2004, and I did it to try it out, to see if I could actually handle it, and um, I ended up uh, taking over for a good friend of mine, Um, her name is um, Cheryl, and she went out on maternity leave, and I had her class until she came back, and that was an English class. So I fell in love with it. I fell in love with um, helping the kids. And around that time in 2004 was um, a little turbulent because of uh, the rise in gang activity. But at the same time, um, once they figured out that I was there to help them and not hurt them, you know, it was easy after that. Nice. Nice. So basically, you started off as a sub, and I, I subbed for a couple years myself, and I, I loved it. Um, and so that is what led you into teaching. Yes, yes, yes. Um, quick story. So I'm a graduate of South Carolina State University. Bulldogs. Woo-hoo. Shout out. Shout out. Um, when I got there, when I, when, I, when I went there, I wanted to basically become – Something like your last host, uh, Raven, last week, I wanted to be either on the radio or television, you know, because DJing was my first passion. So when I went there, I was told that um, it was a major. And when I got there and got my classes and stuff, um, I found out it was a minor. So I had to major in English in order to get my minor in radio and television broadcasting. 
so, wow. Okay. So, so basically having English classes with future teachers, I became a product of my environment. And I eventually, you know, kept a minor, but at the same time, I, 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 I focused more on helping kids because that's who I was around at the time. I was around a bunch of people who were getting ready to become teachers. So I just, I said, well, hey, I can do this. Now, when I first got out of school, I, I, I didn't do it. I went and got a couple of little audience jobs. I worked at a call center for a couple, for a couple of years. And then um, when I felt that was going nowhere, I reached out to Mission School District 1. And I was like, maybe I can sub for a little while, you know, just to see how it is. And throughout the subbing process, um, I felt like I had to, t I, I felt like I had the talent to do it. Yeah. Did you ever question yourself as to, um, think that you weren't ready to be a teacher? Oh, every day, <laughs> every day. Why? Because kids come in questioning themselves every day. So when you're in the process of building up one, when you're in the process of building up other people, Sometimes you use a lot of your own energy and it drains a lot of energy from you. So at the same time, when you feel like you're making progress with a kid and it turns out that that progress didn't go anywhere. So sometimes you feel like you sometimes you question yourself to say, you know, do I do I think I can handle this? Um, do you did you think when you were in college, did you think that you were going to be a teacher? No, no. No, no, I thought I was going to be either on BET or VH1 or MTV or, or be um, on the radio somewhere in the Southeast or East Coast or somewhere like that. I, I, I really thought I was going to actually uh, be an on air personality. So when I found out that what I was doing wasn't a major, I couldn't, you know, get an actual degree doing that, then um, the other options opened up. Doing good, man. You're doing good. <laughs> okay, so you said that you went to school, majored or minored in English, correct? Majored in English, minored in radio and television broadcast. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. So you said that you got in there, you were in there with teachers. So did you ever go back to get your teaching degree? Uh, not exactly. I'm actually in the process of gaining that i'm taking my practice exam in october because technically i'm a bmt aka a hall monitor so okay once, so once i pass my test in october then i will fully be into what i've been meaning to be and trying to do for a long time i got a lot of people that's ride with me on this one because they've been fussing at me for years and um shout out to mr outlaw and 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 and, and miss Herrick. And Miss Harrison and 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 um, Miss Williams and um, that whole Eau Claire High School community that was like, you need to do this. They cornered me one day and was like, <laughs> you need to do this. You 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 need to get yourself together and do this. And right. now and now more than ever with the climate that we have now, as far as with kids and stuff, they need to see more faces like me, more personalities like me, more people that can relate to them and it makes the job easier to, to them. I've been told by kids that if you taught this class, I would learn. And yeah. it, it made a soft spot in my heart. So I was like, yeah, I got to get this. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, I taught for uh, two years in Maryland and then four to five years here as a substitute, but I did all long-term assignments. So um, I got to really know the kids and the schools and I loved it. I loved it. Um, but I eventually got burnt out. So have you ever felt burnt out as a teacher? In your I'm going to say around 2008. 2008 was a really low point because we had, we had to deal with several student deaths. And um, one thing about this position is, well, let's back up. I deal with high school kids. So, um, my heart goes out to the elementary teachers and the middle school teachers because they are growing up 
<laughs> they're starting to feel themselves and then it gets around that fifth grade sixth grade where they still think they're a kid but they want to be grown so yeah and and, yeah. and 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 then hormones kick in and and, and reputations start <laughs> kicking in and and, and right. things just start moving fast they they want to be known as this type of kid when they're actually this type of kid they want to dress this way talk this way act mm. this way but be more of this you know and and, and so um, with dealing with high school kids, you see them for four years grow from a ninth grader to a senior, and you see a lot of maturation. And at the same time, with, 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 with the 10th and 11th grade, they're still doing their thing. And, and sometimes you want – there are a lot of kids, we want them to get to that finish line. But things yeah. happen. It's unfortunate things happen. And um, it, really, it, it really takes a toll on you. It, it, it really, it really breaks your heart when you have to console kids because one of their friends have have passed on or something has happened to them, and then you have to explain it to them, and um, it it gets testy, it gets testy, but you have to dig deep and realize that in order to get this kid to the finish line, you have to keep encouraging this kid, keep giving this kid everything that they need in order to feel like they can do whatever they desire to do. So, yeah, um, we get burned out a lot. We get burned out a lot, especially, well, uh, well, thank you to um, Thanksgiving break. Thank you to uh, Christmas break. <laughs> we, 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 we start that clock on Wednesday. As soon as school starts, the clock starts for winter break, <laughs> for Thanksgiving break, because, <laughs> because those burnouts do come, and they do come quickly, Cause, because mm -hmm. when you want – when when you want a kid to succeed, when I want a kid to succeed more than they want to, and you put right. a lot of emphasis on, I mean, they kids think that we're just mean to them because of what they're going through. No, nah, we want them to get, we want them to realize what they're going through, take in what they're going through, learn from what they're going through. And apply that to their daily life so that way things can get better and better and better for them. I explained to some kids just last week, you know, this the circle of life is like this. It was ooh, sorry. It was <laughs> it was your <laughs> it was your grandparents, then it uh -huh. was your parents, now it's you. So then right. when that circle comes around, you will eventually be the grandparent. Well no, you you'll eventually be the parent. Then you would eventually become the grandparent. So the struggle of life continues. So at the same time, you must learn everything you need to learn. So that way, when your parents get older, you take care of them. They're taking care of you, but now you got to take care of them. Right. So, so, so you have to complete the circle by getting everything that you need, getting these basic tools. Now, if you want to go further into college, get more of an, 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 an advanced education. Like when you do a search on social media or anywhere, there's a search and then there's an advanced search. You can you can actually search all you want, but if you want to get more deeper in detail, that's when college comes in the picture. So when you want to get more deeper in detail, you want to figure out things and most of all earn more money because high school diplomas will get you a little bit of change. Bachelor's degrees will get you more change. Master's degrees will get you more change. But at the same time, is all on what you feel your success is. Success is different for everyone. So whatever you feel your success is, go and reach it and get as educated and you, as you can as possible. They can take anything away from you, but they can't take your education away. You hear me, Debbie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any yeah. Good. Okay, so you told us that you were basically inspired when you went for your minor for English. Um, then you also, excuse me, sorry, you also um, were uh, mm, majoring in broadcasting. You have to excuse me tonight, my tongue tied. <laughs> you were majoring in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what has been your highlight of being a teacher? Seeing that one kid that everyone thinks won't be able to be successful, make it. Mm -hmm. um, I identify with a lot of kids who are quote unquote bad mm -hmm. because I was that lazy kid back in the day. I wasn't bad. I had a lot of jokes. Sometimes I didn't do my work because I was more focused on making people laugh. I thought I was going to be a comedian at one point too. 
<laughs> but you know, being a comedian takes a lot of hard work because my jokes come off the fly. Like I don't, I don't, I don't sit down and write anything. It's just out, out the blue. Like I can just think of some funny combinations and people will laugh. So yeah. being a being a comedian, that's a little too much work for me. But um, okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> seeing seeing that one kid walk across the stage, and out of all the sea of people that's there to congratulate them, mm-hmm. it's funny how they come right to me, mm-hmm. crying, tears in their eyes, snot coming out their nose, and just giving me a hug. Thank you for believing in me. And I tell them, hey, 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 back up. Right. This is, Ralph, this is Ralph Lauren I got on. Don't 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 get that on my <laughs> Ralph Lauren shirt. And 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 they laugh and 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 but but I like to celebrate accomplishments. Even 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 backing up, you know, freshman year going towards the tenth grade year, we'll celebrate that. Um, we'll celebrate. We'll celebrate kids. That's 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 on sports teams. That's on debate teams. I mm-hmm. I believe in supporting kids and no matter what they do. So. Right. Whenever that, you know, whenever that challenging kid gets there, gets to the top of their mountain, I help them celebrate, and 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 it's it's a great feeling for me. I feel like a dad, you know. I feel like a a, a proud father, you know, just going out there and make some of your life. Nice, <laughs> nice. So you spoke earlier of um, a trying time in your teaching career, and you mentioned riots. Can you tell us more about that? I mentioned what now? You mentioned some riots that it was a trying time as a teacher because of, I guess, the rioting or something that was going on. Not really riots. It was just you know, kids at that time felt like um, the only people who love me are people who are in gangs. There's nothing wrong with gangs. There's there's, there's, there's a way there's a way of doing things. Like okay, for example, there's an initiative now. For well, some people are starting an initiative to get more funding for fine arts departments because mm-hmm. um, I was in the band. I knew a lot of kids who were in the band. I worked with kids who were in the band. I had kids that was in gangs that was in the band, and they never missed band practice. Why? Because band was fun. Right. They got structure. They were able to go places. They were able to see things. They were able to travel travel this state and go and perform and people gave them pats on the back, gave them a lot of love and respect and kids love to be recognized. Right. One thing they one thing they love the most is for them it's for it's for one it's, it's for someone to know their face, know their name. They love being recognized. They love for someone to say, hey so and so, how are you? How are you feeling? They, and they may give some type of crazy little response or whatever, but at the same time, when they walk away, they're gonna tell their friends, hey, he knew my name. That's cool. Or well, hey, I didn't think I didn't think he knew my name. How you know my name? You know my name? You know. So um I won't say it was riots. It was just that kids at that time were just trying to figure out where they wanted to go in life. And the way that they felt like doing it was actually just cutting up, being bad. Like I know a lot of kids who were bad back then, but they 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 found their niche. And and now they're doing great things in the community. So it it takes maturity, it takes effort, it takes all of us, it takes a whole village in order to get a kid where they need to go. And I honestly think that if we had more programs to give these kids as far as, you know, marching band, chorus, drama, you know, something that something that a kid can be a part of so that way they can receive some recognition. Everybody won't play a sport. Right. Everybody won't make the basketball team. Everybody won't make the football team. Everybody won't make the lacrosse team. But there's always a spot somewhere musically and somewhere where these kids can use their talents. I ask, I ask a lot of kids, what are your hobbies? And if your hobbies include singing, be in chorus. If your hobbies include beating on the table, be in the band. If your hobbies include, right. if your, if your hobbies include humming, you be in the band too. There's many things that you can do as far as a hobby that can potentially put some money in your pocket. Hey, I was in the band. It turned me into a DJ. So now it makes me put money in my pocket. So it works. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like it. Um, When we were talking about interviewing um, you for the Inspirational Teachers Month, 
you said that you wanted to talk about the unsung heroes in education. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. So, Why was that important to you? So what gets me is like there's a focus on um, teachers when back to school comes. And that's great. That's great. You know, we need some, you know, love and support. We need pats on the back. We need monetary donations. We need everything. A part of a part of that, everyone isn't just standing up in front of your kid teaching. There are many people that are on that campus that can actually teach your kid. And what I mean by that is there's the assist there's the teacher assistant. There's the, you know, hall monitors, there's the um, custodians, there's, you know, every adult on that campus can, can actually teach your kids something. For example, custodians can teach your kid neatness, organization, cleanliness. Um, TAs can teach you formality. It can teach you um, to basically, oh, all my teachers to be on time because they will always get on you about being in school. They always get they always get on you about being in school on time, being in class on time. So everyone on that campus can teach you some type of organizational skill that will be beneficial to whatever that kid has going on. So not just the person with the books or the X and the O's that can actually teach this kid how to be great in life. Everyone on that campus has a responsibility to keep the kids safe. Mm-hmm keep that kid focused on what they need to do, be on time, be, be organized, and be just a good person. So shout out to all the classified staff because classified staff, we get love but not a lot of love. You know what I'm saying? So so those, those are the people who actually have more of a connection with your kid too. The TA, the hall monitor, the custodian. That person will, will 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 be the main one that that has some type of a connection with that kid, and right. if and they and they're able to talk to that kid. Say the kid get mad at the teacher one day and storms out of class. They're gonna run into one of those three people, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. usually, and and usually one of those people will 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 be like, "Hey, what's going on? What's you know what's your issue?" And as much as that kid might not want to talk to that teacher, they're gonna talk to someone. Um, Matter of fact, shout out to all the SROs out there too. Dave Adams, how you doing, man? Shout out to all the SROs that actually, you know, do great things in schools. They're not just, you know, the guy with the badge and the gun. They're the guys that's going to give you a perspective on everything. So shout out to all the SROs out there that that that, that make a difference in schools too. So there are a lot of there are a lot of unsung heroes. Hey, shout out to the cafeteria workers that keep your kid fed. How about that? They might not like all, they might not like all the food, but if you're in good with your cafeteria worker, you'll never be hungry. You can go up there and ask for seconds all you want. You wanna know why? Because they like you, they love you, you're respectful, you don't do anything crazy to them. So hey, they'll look out for you. So shout out to all cafeteria workers. There's some nice people out there. Um, let me see, who else can we think of? Um, library aides, library assistants. They can teach you. They can teach you about certain books. So if you have a if you have a question about this book or that book, they can help you out. They can help you find it. They can they can help you go over it a little bit. Give the book to you as long as you get it back to them. Don't lose the book. Don't leave the book up on your bed and say I don't know where it is. Turn that book back in and um, good to go. So there's there's a ton of people who walk around that campus every day besides teachers. Everyone that is an adult under that building has a responsibility to make sure that that kid is given the proper everything they need. Shout out to all the guidance counselors. Those are the people who are actually setting up your schedules and making sure you're having all the classes you need to be able to walk across that stage. And they set you up with, if you want to go to college, if you want to, um, if you want to um, go into a specific career field, um, guidance counselors will help you with all of that. Um, shout out to all the secretaries out there. People who, the people who parents come and talk to in order to get the kid out of class, they go through a lot of stuff too. Because you have some parents come up there and they be angry, they be upset, something happened. They didn't have any, they didn't have anything to do with it. All they want to do is get you to your kid, and your kid get with you, and y'all go home safely. So shout out to all the, so, so, so shout out to all the secretary workers out there. 
Um, who did I miss, Tiffany? Um, I think I think we got everybody. All class yeah, class there. Covered a lot. We covered a lot. Um, yeah. I think the only other thing of is the bus driver. We get our kids. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so sorry. Shout out to all my bus driver friends out there. We love you. 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 Y'all are overworked too because uh, there's a lot of schools that that are have that have increased in enrollment and they have some packed buses. So sometimes one bus pick up a whole neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So shout out to all my bus driver friends. Thank you so much. I see them all the time on my afternoon duty. Um, I forget all the bus names, but hey, shout out to all the bus drivers out there. Thank y'all for everything that y'all do. Um, I make sure, well, our school, we like to give them t-shirts and stuff. So, um, yeah, we we try to we try to treat our bus drivers well. So yeah, all classified staff need love too. Just like just like how you you do things for teachers, classified staff need love too. What I you thinking, that. Devin? What you thinking? What you thinking? Um, I have a question. What you got? Um, yeah, I forgot the question. <laughs> You didn't forget. You didn't forget. You didn't forget. You're just a little nervous. It's all good. Well, let me ask you a question. How's middle school going so far? Good. It's not scary. The kids are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. You have any? You have any questions about middle school? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> It's just the first couple of days, so you're still learning everything. You find you you find your classes and everything okay? Yes. Good, 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 good. Nobody bothering you, right? Um you're DJing. What do you have you done anything with famous people? Oh man, I've done a few things with some famous people. They might not remember me because DJs come and go. But um yeah, I've I've done a few things with famous people. Um let me see. Uh, most recently, uh, hmm. let me see. I'm trying to think. I haven't done anything as recent as far as this year, but um, yeah, I've been around a few famous people. So that we know that you're a teacher. Um, we also know that you're a DJ, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. Um, when you are out in the community and you see your kids, how is that for you? Because I know for me, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it was cool to me. My kids went on to, oh, there's Miss Tiffany. And they see me in my plain clothes and I no longer look like a teacher. How is that for you? <laughs> oh, it's oh, it's funny because um, I, I'm, I'm funny. So I might have said something that made them laugh. So they're thinking, oh, he come with them jokes. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, it's 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 fun sometimes. Um, sometimes I see the kid that I that, that that I get on a lot about, you know, being in class and doing what they're supposed to do and stuff. So when they see me, they hide behind stuff. Um, I like seeing kids out when I go like um, when I go to like patron places and stuff. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of kids that, especially in high school, they want you to come see them at work. So okay. just so it just so happens that you know sometimes I'll be going out to eat somewhere maybe um I can't go to Five Guys no more I miss Five Guys oh I miss Five Guys <laughs> but um um I go to different places and stuff to 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 get food and everything and then and, and then there's a kid that you know, sometimes I may I might not remember everybody but those that I do remember I see them and give them a look and they're like hey man how you doing what's going on I'm like uh huh uh huh so 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 yeah this is what you do and and it's fun. They um, we dap each other up and we have a good time. And there's also kids that's like, you know, hey, you actually came by my place because I try. If they tell me if they tell me where they work, then I, I I try to come by and go see them and see how they're doing. So some of them are think, oh, he ain't coming. But then I show up and then they're like, oh, you're here. So so yeah, it's pretty fun. I I, I see some kids met. Um, we we have like different like community events here. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, free concerts and stuff, and I see them and give them a hug and stuff. It's it's not too weird. It's 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 fun. It's fun. Like um, with high school kids, you know, they, like I said before, as long as you know who they are, 
you know their name. They love you. They love you. Right, right. Well, it sounds like you really enjoy your job. So how do you how do you protect yourself from getting burnt out? That's my first question. And then the second question is, um, do you see yourself retiring in this career? Um, that, that second question is a question that I question a lot. But um, the first question, how to keep yourself from burning out, just knowing that every day is a new day. Whatever happened yesterday, happened yesterday. It has nothing to do with tomorrow. Um, I tell a lot of kids um, that may have gotten into it with with someone on campus. If they got into it with someone on campus and they'll come the next day thinking that, you know, that person is still mad about that or that person is still thinking about that. I usually tell them, hey, that was yesterday. You know, what, what, whatever got you upset yesterday, you had time to sleep on it. Don't worry about it no more. It's, it's, it's water under the bridge. Now, you may have some people that may, you know, keep things going. And um, that's, just Im- that's just immaturity. But for me, once the 315 bell ring, once the last bus leave, once, once 345 come and I'm leaving campus, it's over with. I don't think about it no more. You know, okay. that day, we might have got hectic. We worked it out, going about your business. The next day, still see that same kid, give me a hug. And, and, and they get mad because I always say, give me a hug. And they're like, we don't do no hug. Because, <laughs> <laughs> but I still offer a hug because there's power in hugs. You know, yeah. people, people say all the time, you know what I'm saying, don't, don't. You know, well, people say all the time, hug it out. Because after, after a good hug, you feel better. So every day I erase my brain from, from anything that happened the day before. T- tomorrow's a new day. Um, could I see myself retiring? Maybe. I got started at an early age. I got started at, what, 23, 24? And now, right. I'm being, now I'm being 39, going into year 10 at AC floor. Uh, what, 15 total? You got to be, what, uh, 27, 28 years? So I'm I'm just about halfway there as far as retiring. So I can I can kind of retire kind of young. I still got a little bit of life left, you know, to um do whatever I want to do. So will I retire? Mm, don't know. Don't um, know. <laughs> don't know. Don't know for sure. But um, I mean, maybe, but it's not a strong maybe. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, I can see you retiring as a teacher, maybe moving on to be a, a college professor or maybe being a counselor or maybe doing something else. But I have a feeling that you are going to retire working with kids, whether it's in a teaching capacity or not, because um, you're really, really good with kids. Um, you really care about kids. And that was one thing that you and I connected on was the things in the community that both of us are doing. Yeah. Um, and our love for children and, and the love for education. So um, yeah, that's true. If that maybe, you know, if that maybe is not so strong, then I'm gonna ask you again next year, and we'll see how that goes when you are fully licensed and back in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That 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 may be a that may be a may well, well, that may be a way different answer. And, right, especially with you know the mentoring kicking off and stuff, you know, um, yeah, that may be a totally different answer because I get to see you know the kids that we're mentoring now grow up and become successful young kings and queens. So yeah, that that may change as as time progresses. To be honest, I don't see myself doing anything else. Um, I I feel fortunate because I work in two fields that I absolutely love um i love music so djing is great um it's 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 definitely a blessing to still be able to dj in certain places you know shout out to um my house restaurant and bar um shout out to um the different the different places in the past where i've spent records at um shout out to the different djs who vouch for me um DJ Prince Ice, DJ B Lord, um, shout out to my crew, Stupid Dope Moves, you know, um, DJ Frosty, Charlemagne the God, uh, DJ I Am, 
uh, DJ Go Get Em, DJ Kryptonite, Hype Man Coop, DJ T.O., who's, who's on 92.7 The Block in Charlotte. So make sure you tune in to her, Middays, DJ, T, uh, DJ T.O. And uh, let me see, did I get everybody? Oh, uh, DJ I Am. Um, shout out to that crew that keeps me going. Uh, our, our group chat is, is very jokey. We have a lot of jokes with each other, but they keep me going every day. Um, and I also get to work with kids like you, Devin, in the future, and um, all the high school kids. So I feel like I feel very fortunate to be able to be in two separate arenas, but I actually get I actually love both of them, and I get to actually keep them separate, but but keep them alive and well. Because um, at first. I was kind of scared to let people know that I DJ on the side because I didn't want things conflicting with each other. But as time go along, you know, things got a little more easier and stuff. And I keep things separate, you know, so I'm very fortunate. You have a lot of people who go to their jobs every day and, and it's it's a job that they really didn't go to school for. You know, you get your degree and... You have to basically fund your dreams by finding a job somewhere and financially, um, financially getting yourself straight in order to, in order for your dream job. People talk about dream jobs all the time, and I live my dream job, so I feel blessed. I feel very fortunate that I'm able to do both of these things and be able to provide a service for not only just people who want to enjoy themselves and have fun but also young people who want to learn and be more um, productive with their futures. So, yeah, um, I'm lucky to do what I do. Where do you teach it now? Uh, high school called AC Florida High School, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, like I said, I'm a hallmarker right now, but once I pass my test, yeah, I'll be back at it again. I got started. I got started in that arena at, at Eau Claire High School. Shout out to the Shamrocks over there at Eau Claire High School. Um, I'm a graduate of C.A. Johnson High School. Shout out to all the Green Hornets out there. Yeah, that's your sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, nice. sister. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So where are some of the places that we can find you? Um, I think that it's very impressive that you um, are working uh, two jobs that you love, um, one of them that you own. Um, so that is your brand. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people cannot say, um, that they are in and working every day in a position or a job that they love. Um, so I think that's really great that you're able to do that. I know that with me working on my master's um, to become a counselor right now, I'm working in, at a job that I love what I do. I look forward to getting up. Um, so I've been blessed to be able to be able to do that. But a lot of people are not able to, to say, I love both of my jobs, not just one job, but both of my jobs. Two of them? Both of my jobs. Yeah, <laughs> that is yeah. hard. That is hard yeah. to get. That is hard to to multiple streams of income where where, where you're actually um saying that mm -hmm. hey you know i love this place it's just very hard to do and um what what i would like to say to people out there who feel like they can't do that is to always follow your dreams your dream job could be right there out there in front of you so follow your dreams on um, whatever wherever it's there you want to do i i didn't think in college that I would be, you know, um, I won't say popular, but I, I didn't think that I'd be this far along DJ, you know, um, I was grateful for, for a lot of people to give me an opportunity to DJ mm -hmm. and, um, what I, and, and, and basically, you know, it's a crap that you have to work on every day. You just don't DJ at one party and say, Oh, I'm good. You know, you have to work at it every day. Um, Music comes out every day, so you have to be in tune with what people like. Um, it's hard sometimes. It's stressful sometimes because sometimes, you know, you just don't know what people's definition of fun is, so you don't know what they really want to hear. I mean, like, sometimes you do know what you want to hear, but sometimes you don't know what they want to hear. So, um, like any other job, it, it well, well, I won't say job but like like any other profession it may get testy to you 
But at the end of the day, you know, as long as you're a good person, people will always, you know, trust in you to do whatever they need for you to do, whether it's, you know, a, a club a club appearance, whether it's like weddings and stuff, you know, whether it's um, different uh, function in the communities or whatever. Um, as long as you're a good person, if you're a good person and, and you do good business, then people will always rock with you. You, you hear that future business owner? Mm-hmm. Always, <laughs> always, always treat people right with respect and dignity and just be a good person. You know, if one, if you're a good person, that 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 works better than any promotional tool. Word of mouth is is so much better than any social media flyer or, or anything. Right. So I heard that you do weddings. I heard that you do parties. What what are all the events that you like to do? That um, you are I'm pretty much a, a DJ for any occasion. Um, I have a uh, fashion show coming up this Saturday at the Sunny Sportsplex. Shout out to Sarah and the whole team. I'll see them on Saturday. And um, uh, I've I've done different events. I've done events for schools. I've done events for um, churches. I've done events for communities. Um, uh had a uh, had a um, national night out event a couple of weeks ago that went very well. National night out back to school bash that went very well. Um, trying to think. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, like like you asked before, yeah, I've met a few people. Um, I can definitely show you pictures later on like that whenever that. But um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Who are your favorite artists? Favorite artist? Uh, let me see. I don't know if you heard of this guy. This guy name is Nas. He's a very dope artist. Uh, you gotta check him out. He speaks a lot of prosperity and stuff like that. Um, my absolute favorite is Nas. Um, favorite group? Yeah, Nas. 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 I know who Nas is. You said Nas, like N A Z. No, N A S. Yeah. N-A-S. Okay, I thought you said Nas. I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Um, favorite, yeah, your yeah, favorite um, artist is Nas. Favorite group, Outkast. It's a tie between Outkast and um, Wu Tang Clan. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I know that um, that my son, he likes. Um, he wants to do some recording stuff. So oh, I, was gonna, I was going to let him ask you about that. Okay. Going into the studio, how that is and stuff like that. Um, I want to get in the studio, but I didn't know if you had access to one. Yeah, I have access, I have, I have access to a studio. What would you like to do? Uh, <laughs> record something. I mean, I, I mean, what you going to sing? Uh, you going to rap? Uh, you're gonna do some like uh, poetry. I mean, you go you go kick some knowledge. I mean, <laughs> Sing, probably. Sing. or or do some lyrical rapping. Lyrical? Or, are you lyrical? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, sixth grade lyrical rapper. All right, cool. Well, whenever, you, whenever you're ready, you know we'll go over some material and stuff, and you know, put you in the booth and see if you can do it. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> At at minimum, maybe you can take him to the studio so he can see what the studio looks like live and in person. Okay, yeah, we can definitely do that. Definitely do that. Um, I know of, I know of a couple studios in Charlotte, so um, yeah, we can set that up. And make sure that happens. What radio station are you affiliated with? Kiss one hundred three point one. Um, it's uh, adult contemporary, but uh. It's 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 a very lively station. Um, shout out to Kirsten on three point one and my coworkers, uh, um, Rob and Simone. We have um, Rick and Sasha in the morning, and um, Johnny Green in the midday. So um, yeah, shout out to kids. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so. We're talking about being inspirational teachers. We're talking about being business owner, business owners and entrepreneurs as well. Um, what are some things that you do in the community? Well, um, along with um, 
the radio station and along with my DJ talents. Um, like I said, I did, had a national night event, which is a um, which is an event that um, statewide, uh, basically, um, it's about neighborhoods getting together to um, say no to crime and, and 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 come together and celebrate as a neighborhood. Um, uh, I know. I remember when we first um, reconnected. You had done a. I don't know. Was it your mayor or your some councilman or something that they were having something like a big fish fry or something? Oh <laughs> yeah, remember. yeah, yeah! Shout out to Jim Clyburn and his famous fish fry that happens. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was it was very big this year because he had uh, the uh, twenty two Democratic candidates come in and uh, speak to everyone. So yeah, it was a big event. People came and got some fish and. And, yeah, and, and, and drink some water and stuff. And <laughs> is that an event that you've done before, or this was your first time? Oh no, I wasn't the DJ there. Like a friend oh, of mine, um, oh, a, a, a friend of mine, DJ To, was the DJ there. So shout out to okay. SDM's DJ To. She, um, she was the DJ, and I went to support her. And um, it was it, it was it, it was a grand event. Um, took a little while to get in. Took okay. a little while to get some fish, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was a great event. Um, I think there's another coming up soon, if I'm not mistaken, and it's 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 pro- it, it'll probably be even bigger next year, being that you know who Jim Clyburn is, and depends on who's the Democratic candidate. I'm pretty sure they will come in town next year too, so it may be even bigger next year. But um, yeah, nice. shout out shout out to, shout out to Jim Clyburn and his. Um, team for putting on the fish fry. The fish fry is always a, a, a grand event. A grand event. Very, very nice. Um, um, speaking, uh, I wanted to add more things because you said because you said you, you were talking about inspirational teachers. I want to shout out to my favorite teacher in the whole wide world, Miss Amari Polovic. She's the one who actually got the bug in me to actually um, become more better with my words. Become um, more in tune to um, English per se as far as uh, communication and being able to project yourself and speak more clearly and speak with, with some with some tone and diction. I think she's over at Jerry High School now, so I want to shout out to Mari Polovic. She was, was very influential in my life, making me um, learn new words, spell new words. Um, in high school, we call them SAT words. So Learn new words and spell new words, use them in a sentence, being able to put your verbs where they need to be. Use the correct verb. Um, why people why people use is for everything. Who you is, where you is, you know, like you use the correct verb with your prepositions and your subjects. So once again, shout out to Amari Polovic. She is a great inspiration in my life. Well, make sure that you tag her so that she can see that you did a, a special shout out for her. Um, since I cannot spell that last name, make sure that you tag her, please. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, I'll find her. I'll find her. <laughs> so, real quickly, because we have a few minutes, um, mm-hmm. you have signed up to be a um, Butterfly Visions Kids Mentor um, this school year. And we are very thankful um, that you have signed up to be a mentor with BVP this year. Um, I know that you are going to be um, Devin's mentor as well as uh, little Mr. Terrell's um, mentor. So that is something that I wanted to say thank you for doing because mm-hmm. we need more men um, in the community working with our children. And so I wanted to get some input from you. Um, I've heard that it's really hard to get men to um, do community work, to work with children, so forth and so on. What is your view on the difference that it makes for men to be involved in the community, especially with our kids? Actually, I would like to say that's a myth. Um, Shout out to Patrick Patterson and the whole SC male conference team. Um, Patrick just had a South Carolina male achievement conference like um, two weeks ago, and there were over 500 attendees. Um, men of men of all ages and backgrounds, um, sons of all ages and backgrounds, 
or all in one building together, you know, try to, uh, trying to inspire, educate, motivate. So it's not hard for, it's not hard for men to be involved in mentorship. Um, basically, if, 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 if that guy has the passion to look down at a young black boy and say, I want to help, then they're going to help. So, um, I wouldn't say that uh, it's hard to get black men involved, um, especially with what's, what's going on today as far as the climate is concerned, concerning us as black men. Um, a black man will, 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 will reach out his hand and help up anyone, um, any day, any time. So to Devin and to Terrell, I'm happy to be your mentor. We're going to have some fun. Well, we're also going to learn, and we're also going to inspire each other, and we're also going to educate each other. Now, we're going to do fun things, but most of all, you know, the, 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 the message is so that you're able to become the best person that you can be. Okay? Okay. Um, what and, was the name of the shout out to Michelle, too. Shout out to Michelle Terrell's mom. Yeah. What was the name of the group again? You just mentioned the Male Achievement Conference. Uh, it's it's called the um, SC Male Achievement Conference. It was um, a couple of weeks ago. It was over at the um, Richland Two Innovation Center. It was, and it's a grand event every year. Hopefully, I can get um, you, Devin, and, and um, Terrell to come down next year and um, join the festivities. We had a we had a real good time out there. So, um. Black men are definitely willing to help black boys become successful, to become young, successful black kings. We're definitely willing to help. Nice, nice. Okay, um, so you're going to be mentoring um, Devin. You're going to be mentoring uh, Mr. Correll as well. Um, mm -hmm. And part of the CDC's kid mentor program is um, getting children out into the community um, learning about advocating for themselves and others. Look at Tisha. Thank you, Tisha, for shouting out Amari Palovic. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Tish. I, I was trying to figure out how to I spell think, her name. I think Tish took her. I think I think Tisha took her too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. She definitely knows who I'm talking about. She's she's very inspirational. So so yeah. Thank you, thank thank you Miss Cornelius. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, with the member with the BVP. Um, mentors we are going to be teaching the kids how to advocate for themselves and for others um, we're going to get them out in the community but we're also going to be focused on um, improving social skills life skills um, and stuff like that so <clears throat> when it comes to our children what what would you say is something that what is what would you say to parents nowadays when it comes to their children and working with the, the teachers in the schools, because I know as a teacher myself, sometimes the more difficult person to deal with is a parent sometimes. Um, so for you, what advice would you give to parents when it comes to working with their the teachers in the school systems and then working with mentors like you who are really, really trying our best to um, partner with them to make their children, you know, Better people, better citizens. You know, learn learn the skills that they need to learn. That's a that's a heavy heavy question. But I would say, I would say to any parent, don't don't react to every situation thinking of your experience in high school. Mm -hmm. High schools are different now. Um, there are some parents who walk through the doors and their memories of when they were at that school or at any school will come up and they come in already upset because oh, I got to deal with this. Listen to what's listen to what's going on with your child. And before reacting, just listen, take everything in, um, find out, you know, where the source of any of these distractions are coming from and then work with it. Um, beatings doesn't really solve too much now. Um, with these kids, they learn more with actually, you know, it, it may take a few lessons as far as talking things out, but 
most of all, these kids just want to be heard. They want to be understood. And there are times when, and I'm being very careful with this because I don't want to piss anybody off, but at the same time, <laughs> how how we came up and how we were disciplined, um, some of it worked with us because I, 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 I usually see like response to that same way. I was beaten. I was fine. It was a different time back then. You know, back then, you know, it was a custom to basically get whoopings in front of your peers, or it was a custom to, you know, your mom showing out and embarrassing you. I mean, it it it, it was things that we knew of in our community. Mm-hmm. So now with you know. Like, think about it. The food that we ate back then isn't the food that we have now. So the chemical balances that these kids are are um, developing right now isn't the same chemical balance that we had. Right. You know, I was talking to um, a co-worker today, and he was talking about how kids don't stay outside long because, you know, it's hot. You know, we were taught that, hey, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, you had to get out. And you didn't cook. <laughs> And you didn't come back in until the sun went down. So we developed a we developed a tolerance for the heat. You know, kids nowadays they can stay outside is is you know they may they stay outside for maybe an hour hour and a half maybe two hours tops. But you know, we are we and when I say we we adults are more accustomed to air conditioning because we have grown up and we feel like in our house the air, the, the air conditioning is going to be on me or the fan is going to be on me. So even we've grown accustomed to the air conditioning. So when we go outside, we're like, ooh, it's hot. So if it's hot to us, the older people, you know it's hot to younger people. So listen to your kid and understand that there's going to be growing pains. Yes, we were young. Yes, we did crazy things. These kids, some of them don't fear nothing. So mm-hmm. they have to, they have to, they, they may have to touch the stove five, six, seven, eight, nine times. They might have to get burned a few times. But every time they get burned, be right there to love them. Be right, be right there to respect them. Be right there to offer a hug. Be right there to, sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just sit there and let them go through what they're going through. But just being there, just being a presence, you know. Right. Kids don't like to be alone when they're going through something. So sometimes there, there's times when kids are upset and they may come to me or I may, you know, see that they're upset and I may take them to like, you know, um, the cafeteria. You know, we have a huge courtyard at our school. So I take them in the courtyard and I let them sit there and I let them air it out. Mm-hmm. I say to them, air it out. If you got to sit there and be quiet for a little bit, air it out. Be, be one with your own thoughts. Right. Then once, then once she feel comfortable with talking about it, we'll talk about it and we'll come to a a, a positive solution. But right. but everything isn't solved by just screaming, yelling, fussing, hitting, yeah. or whatever. It it, it mm-hmm. no, nothing gets solved that way. Um, you can't you can't ease anger with anger. Someone has to have the cool head, and once everything comes down, and then you're able to actually figure out what the source of the problem is, talk that out. Um, everything will be a lot better. So, you know, there, there's no manual when, when it comes to parenting. Um, you may feel like you're not doing a great job, but deep down inside, that, that kid will let you know somehow, some way that you're doing a great job. Because we all, we, all, we all as people love affirmations. We love being told you're great. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. You're the greatest. You're gonna be somebody. So, if we enjoy that as adults, you know, you know, kids are gonna enjoy that a hundred times more. So, even though you're mad, even though you may be mad at your child as a parent, at the end of the day, after all the fussing dies down, after all the anger dies down, still give your kid a hug. Still give your kids, a, still give your kid a kiss on the forehead and tell him you love. Him. They'll never forget it. Yeah, I think that that is is amazing. Um, I believe that that's my parenting style. Um, I don't believe in a lot of beating and hitting and so forth and so on. It takes a lot for me to get to that point with my kids. Um, but I think it's really important that kids are heard. I know when when 
and our, back in grandma's time, she said kids are not meant to be meant, meant to be heard or something like that. <laughs> that you know was said we back. In the we weren't meant to be heard. We were meant to be taught a lesson. But at the same yeah. time, the, mm-hmm. the 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 beating was more than the lesson. So now right. we have to get back to the lesson. Less of the beating, yeah. more of the lesson. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So. Um, I really appreciate you um, taking the time this evening to talk to us. Um, I know that you've been an inspiration to me and I personally assigned you to my son because I think that you would be very good with him um, as well. Um, But also because being a man and being a teacher, I think is very important. We need more male teachers. We need more male mentors. We need more men in the community doing things in the community with our children. So I just wanna thank you for being one of those men one of the many that do take the time to educate and to mentor and be in the community with our kids. Um, But also you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur you have your own business, you're successful. Um, And like you said earlier, you are doing two things that you love that not very many people can say. So I applaud you for following your dreams, following your passions, um, but also giving back to the community and recognizing that there are unsung heroes in our in our schools that children need to be respectful of, not to look down on them, and to know that everybody in the school community is in partnership for their well-being and for their education. So I think that's very, very important that you wanted to bring that out tonight. And you didn't want to focus on you. You made it very clear to me you did not want to focus on you, um, that you wanted to make sure that you focused on those that most a lot of times are overlooked and um we don't talk about we don't see but are good with our children the lunch lady the bus driver the the tas the counselors the secretaries all of those people are very important to our children's education when they're in school so i really appreciate you bringing that out and making sure that we talked about that tonight well in order for me to be who i am let me shout out some very important men in my life, you know, um, shout yeah. out to, shout out to Mr. Mack, shout out to uh, Mr. Moy, shout out to uh, Mr. Whaley, shout out to Mr. McClure. Thank you for the opportunity to come work in your high school. Um, shout out to Mr. Murphy, one of the greatest guidance counselors I know. Shout out to Mr. Major, also. Um, uh, ooh, so many, it's so many <laughs> men that impacted me. Shout out to Mr. Outlaw, who 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 has been on my case. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm going to pass this test, and you'll be the few, one of the first few people that I that 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 that, that get the news. Um, yes, <laughs> so many men who've paved the way for me to become uh, who I am because they, you know, they sat me down and they and they've given me good, solid, sound advice in order to change my thinking. Once my thinking changed. My my teaching skills gets better and better and better, and 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 every year, you know, you have to tweak things because not every kid is the same. That's um, true. Just because you know I do things with this kid doesn't mean they don't work with the next kid, you know, um, and and so forth and so on. So there there are a lot of great men who got me to this point, and I definitely want to thank them and honor them by. Um, sowing a seed in me so that we have to sow a seed in the others. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I will make sure to remind you to tag all of them in the video and in your interviews so that they can see that you shouted them out, but also so that we can see who they are and who was influential to you um, in your career, in your education, being the man that you are. Um, which we greatly appreciate. I did not ask you this question, but I have a lot of ladies that are watching right now. Are you married? No, <laughs> no, 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 not married, not married. Um, single out here in these streets. <laughs> do you have any kids of your own? No, I don't have any kids, but I do have a beautiful niece and two nephews. Well, three nephews. I'm sorry, three nephews that I that I love and care for so yeah shout out to jermaine shout out to amaya shout out to dylan and um nice. shout out to little kaden those are my my niece and nephews 
Nice, nice. You talk about them a lot, so I wanted to make sure that I got them in there. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Thank you for not letting me forget them. I, I, of I, course, I, of course. I, I'd have to answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, do you have any more questions for him? Um, nope. <laughs> you ready to get in the studio? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, then. We're going to see what you lyrically about, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. cool. So again, thank you, Mr. Delvon, for being on the Speak Up and Inspire series tonight. Oh, thank um, you. To inspirational teachers, and you definitely are an inspirational teacher. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, I have tagged your DJ pa page, but also make sure that you go in and tag several of the people that you talked about tonight, especially those that inspired you to be the man that you are today. So I really appreciate your time, and thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye.